Hi guys. Okay, so let me level with you. This is going to be a weird video because I've recorded it three times and it keeps coming out really long and really rambling. So I'm going to start by just giving you what's going on and then I'll give a full description of my day after. So if you're just curious about my update, here we go. I am not pregnant. I had an ultrasound done and quants done and my ultrasound showed absolutely nothing and my quants are essentially at zero. So I'm now pregnant. I am not sure what happened and neither is the doctor really. Um, it's best guess is that I had a very early loss. So what would probably be considered a chemical, like a chemical in a couple days, maybe. But really and truly, there was no a never a viable pregnancy. So um, it raised some concerns. And as a result, my OB ordered a test and a procedure that I don't know how to pronounce very well. Uh, sonohydrogram, I think is how she pronounced it. It's where they do an ultrasound after filling your uterus with a water solution. So I'll be doing that. I have a piece of popcorn in my teeth. <laughs> I'll be doing that. Um, the, she said about the day after I stop bleeding from my next period. So I'm not to try in the interim because if I do get pregnant again, she is worried I'm going to have recurrent miscarriages. So we are officially taking a break from TTC, kind of. Um, I'm supposed to track everything because she wants to know where I am in my cycle. So if I ovulate and stuff, she wants to know um, just for reference when we go in for the um, procedure. But yeah, so that's sort of the quick update. So not pregnant and um, this loss raised some concerns for her, especially how the bleeding kind of pattern went. Excuse me. Therefore, she is having us do this ultrasound. So, that's the short version. If you're interested in the long version, here we go. So this morning, as you all know, I had an ultrasound done, and I did. they did that first, which now I'm thinking might have been a little silly. So they did the ultrasound, and essentially was nothing. They literally could not see anything. So, he measured um, my ovaries and measured my endocrine layer and everything and there was a couple of cysts on my ovaries but really and truly nothing so I then talked to the nurse and she said there wasn't anything so either you're extremely early and your dates are off or you've already lost baby or you are losing baby kind of is was the basic um the basic summary. So, um, we then talked to the doctor, and the doctor said, yep, that's what happened. I told her that there wasn't any way that my dates were wrong. I know when I ovulated, I know when my last period was. So, she and I both agreed that it was, that I had had an early loss. Um, it was just was, how far into the loss process am I? So, she ordered betas, um, HCG quantitatives, to see um, what my levels were at, and based on what they were today, they were going to either order that I can be done, that either if they were really low, they were just going to say you're done, or if they were higher, they were going to have me do a follow-up on Saturday. Um, so we talked to the doctor for a while, went through all my dates, and went through my history, and she was concerned um, because I'm so young, and because we don't have any major health issues, I don't have, I'm um, my blood type is positive, so that can be a cause. If it's negative, it can be a cause for recurrent miscarriages. I don't have, I don't smoke, I don't drink, like I don't have any of the kind of red flag things. I am heavier, but she said that that shouldn't be an issue because that the bigger issue is if I'm ovulating, which I am. So she had some red flags, and she also, I told her I'd had blood workup done um, a couple of years ago, and everything was normal except for I had one hormone, a male androgen hormone that was slightly high, but barely. And she said that that really didn't concern to her. She said it also could depend on where I am in the cycle, and she said it shouldn't impact fertility. So, 
she was concerned but didn't have any answers. So she was going to kind of think on it, and she sent me off to the hospital to do my labs. So I went to the hospital. I actually um, do my OB women's care at a small private clinic. And then um, for labs that they want to be, get back really fast, they send you to the hospitals. They're, they only have one. This is not important information. Anyways, I got sent to the hospital. They stuck me three times because they couldn't get a vein, and I finally got stuck, and I got the blood done, came home, and I rested, and I talked to my boss, who was very supportive, and basically just said to stay home for a while. I told her I didn't know what was going on, and she was like, you know what, it doesn't matter, you're going through a lot, just be home for a while. So, um, that was good, and then I got the call, it was only like two or three hours, which is really fast, even for this big hospital. And my levels were essentially at zero. So she didn't say an exact number. I'm guessing they were like below one. She didn't say they were zero. She said they were essentially null. Whatever that means. So we talked for a while and she had me walk through her through all the dates again. And she, she's kind of a little bit goofy. So you sort of have to walk her through things twice. Um, but I walked her through all the dates and stuff again. And she goes, you know... I don't think the bleeding you had was a normal period, and this bleeding is not a normal period because you obviously couldn't have ovulated in the, you know, five days between bleeds and had a little phase. She goes, I think you're finishing up a loss that started during your period. And she goes, but I'm concerned because you've had this bleeding both pregnancies. And the last pregnancy you carried, uh, the baby grew for four or so weeks beyond when I bled. And so she's like, you know, I'm concerned about there being something physically inside of your uterus that's causing these losses. And she goes, and there's no way to know that unless we get in there. So she kind of went over some options, and the, her b biggest recommendation was this water ultrasound. Um, and I looked up the procedure, and it, it looks kind of weird and um, uncomfortable, but I think it's our best option to just rule out that there's nothing inside of my uterus causing problems. So we're going to do that. So what happens now is we can't try currently because obviously they don't want us to get pregnant and then try this procedure because it will essentially abort the pregnancy. So um, for the next few weeks until I get a normal period, um, I'll be tracking everything and I'll probably still update you guys. I won't know what cycle day I am because I don't know what I should count as cycle day one. But I will update you guys as I can. And then I'll update you guys telling you about this procedure I'm going to have done next cycle. And see how that goes. So, it's a weird day. But I definitely, I definitely knew it was coming so it feels a little bit better. Um, it's sad because I was really excited and this due date would have been so perfect. It would have been exactly between my husband and my birthday. Um, he's in May and I'm in April and it was the very end of April and it was just, excuse me, my nose is very itchy. It was going to be sweet, but there is a reason for everything and I still believe that. So we just have to wait and see what the reason is for this. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on here, so I'm sorry if this is really rambly, but it's under 10 minutes, and that was my goal. So I love you all, and if you have any questions for me, please let me know. I'm really bad at this, like responding to comments on Instagram and on YouTube. I'm just terrible at it. I really apologize. It's not you. It is me. I'm technologically completely incompetent. So um, I love you all, and baby dust, I'll talk to you soon.